Hello and welcome to the video. Today we're going to talk about how to make an AMI, which is an Amazon machine image, in AWS. So to start off, we're currently signed into our AWS management console here. We now need to navigate to the EC2 panel, right? And we can do that in many ways, right? It might be in your recently visited, it might be bookmarked here, but worst case scenario, you could type into the top bar EC2. Now, once I select it, it'll bring us to our dashboard. And here we'll see our instances, our key pairs, our AMIs, our snapshots, right? We're going to see all of the stuff that pertains to EC2 instances. So step one here is going to be to explain what an AMI is, figure out what use cases you'd even need an AMI for, and then we'll actually go into the step-by-step -step on how to set it up. Uh, but first off, an AMI is basically going to be a template that you can use that will copy the the current operating system and software installed on one of your instances, and it'll allow you to have a template that you can spawn other instances with that same configuration. Now, the huge, huge benefit of this is let's say you're in an enterprise environment, right? And you need to set up hundreds of machines all using the same software and operating system. Instead of individually going instance to instance and installing all of that software, you can use what's called an AMI, to have a template that you spawn all of your instances off of, thus saving you a ton of time, right? So now that we talked about AMIs, let's talk about how we create those AMIs. Step one is to go to instances. Now, in order for you to follow along, you're going to need an instance that is booted up and running. Uh, but if you do not have that, no worries. Two videos ago, I have a uh, how to create EC2 instances uh, Amazon video. So feel free to check that out. Shameless plug there. Um, that should be from about a week ago. And I know obviously time is relevant depending on when you're watching the video, uh, but it should only be a couple videos back. Shouldn't be too hard to figure it out. I'll also put it in the description. Uh, what we see here is we have an instance running. I'm going to select this instance, right? This is called example instance, which is going to be used as my example, shocker. I'm then going to hit the drop down of actions. I'm going to go to images and template. And in order to create an AMI, I'm going to click create image. Now we see three options here. I will talk about the other two options at the end of the video so we don't confuse ourselves. Uh, but for now, all I'm going to do is hit create image and it will bring me to my AMI creation panel. So I'm going to name this example underscore AMI. Uh, description is optional. I'm going to say this is for YouTube. Hello world. Now what we get to select Right, as we get a select, if we want to add any storage volumes to it, I'm going to currently leave it at the uh, size of eight that we have here. Um, the reason for that is the more storage you add onto this, the more expensive it can be, right? So I'm going to just keep it as low as possible. I'm then going to look at tags, right? And it's going to be optional for us. Uh, this will allow us to tag images and snapshots together. This will do it separately, right? This really isn't going to matter to you all too much unless you start dealing with snapshots. I'm going to leave this checked for now. I'll then hit create image. Now it's going to say currently creating our AMI. We can view it by hitting this link, uh, but I'm going to show you how to you view it from the EC2 dashboard just so we know how to navigate, you know, as we're learning the ropes of the system. I'm going to click on AMI here. Now, if you've left this on public images, right? If you left your AMI scene on public images or private images, right? You may not see it. So you're going to want to select owned by me in order to guarantee that it pops up, right? Once again, if your AMI is not popping up, make sure that this drop down column is either on owned by me or private images should work and it will pop it up. So now we see our example AMI. And as we were saying before, once again, this is a template for us to launch other instances. So I'm going to show us how to use this AMI we just created. I'm going to select it. I'm going to hit launch instance from AMI. And now it's going to give us the rundown of all of the different things we need to configure. Luckily, since we're spawning this based off an AMI, right? Since we're booting up this instance based off an AMI, we do not have to do the tricky work of figuring out what operating system we want to do. We're not going to have to set up software on it later on, right? All of that's going to be preloaded, right? We can see here the operating system is going to be from the AMI itself, right? We don't actually have to change that up. The next thing you have to do, as always, is key pair, right? We're booting up an EC2 instance. So in order for you to access it, you need a key pair for that to work. So I'm going to use my YouTube key pair part two. Let's scroll down. 
uh, security group. We talk about this in more depth in my EC2 uh, tutorial video. Uh, but long story short, this is basically just firewall rules for who can and who cannot access your instance. And then last but not least, we have configuration of storage. Once again, I'm going to leave this on 8. Uh, T2 Micro is free tier eligible. I'm going to leave this low so that I do not get charged for uh, this instance. In terms of advanced information or advanced details here, you really won't need to deal with this unless you start playing around with the identity access management instance profiles. Right? You start putting role-based rules in there. And the only other thing that you can configure if you're interested is what shutdown behavior you'd want, right? When you shut it down, right? Do you want it to terminate the instance immediately? For most of you, this will be no. Uh, when you do uh, hibernating behavior, right? Basically, all this is dealing with the, the power restart and just general rebooting options. So now that we just went through a couple of these advanced options, we're gonna hit launch instance. And now it will tell us we have successfully initiated our launch of the instance. Now, if you get any errors saying that your AMI is still pending, you just have to give it a couple minutes and then hit retry. It'll probably take a minute or two. Uh, I actually got that, inst uh, that error earlier on, so I just had to keep spamming retry. Uh, but now we will see that our instance has been launched. So the question is, where do we view our instance that we've just created from this AMI? We're gonna click on instances, and you're gonna see right here, I didn't add a name to it, I'll actually add it here, AMI instance. But we now have created an instance that has used the AMI that we generated from example instance, right? So the question now becomes, what do these two instances share in common, right? This is the, uh, the pre-cloned instance, right? Like this is the original copy, and then this is the clone off of it. What do these guys share in common? Uh, well, basically they're gonna share, they have the same operating system and the same software installed on them, right? Now the next question, and I hinted at this earlier before, I'm gonna click on example instance, go to actions and images and template, right? And this is just to talk through, do not follow along at this point. The real question is, the first thing we did was create image, right? This created our AMI, but what do these other two options do? Well, for starters, if you create template from instance, what this will allow you to do is it will allow you to create a template that doesn't have the same operating system or software guaranteed, it'll actually guarantee that the hardware remains the same, right? We can see here all the hardware is figured out, including the firewall, right? So using this uh, template, right? So once again, to show you what it looks like, using the option of, oop, almost terminated, of create template from instance, this will guarantee that you have a template that is based off of hardware. Now this actually will work perfectly with our AMI, because if we select the AMI that we were using, let's go to my AMIs, uh, da -da -da. confirm changes. Uh, I'm gonna use the example AMI that we just created, confirm changes. If I add my AMI to this template, we have now created an overall template that has not only copied the operating system and the software from the original instance, but it will also have uh, copied the hardware we're using too. Right, so once again, this option, all it's doing is creating a template for the server type we're using, the firewall we're using, and then also the storage, right? And if we feed it that AMI, we now have the full picture, the perfect template of that original instance. Now I'm gonna select the instance one more time and show us our last option. We have launch more like this. I'd actually recommend you all stay away from this option, uh, at least a little bit. I haven't had too much success with it. A lot of times it'll set up the storage volume or it'll mess up the storage volumes and also the a lot of the software configs. I'd really only recommend this if you were troubleshooting um, user data templates. But outside of that, I'd really advise you all if you want to create templates to use the first two options, right? Remember image for software and operating system and template for hardware with the added caveat, as we showed before, that you could create a template with an AMI that you've created in it and that'll be the full package. It'll copy the software and the hardware for you to launch other instances off of that are basically replicas. One last thing, make sure to subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you all wanna see in the future, and I'll keep trying to pump out as much AWS content as I can. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.